Good morning, everybody. Welcome to morning prayer at um, Muir's Chapel. It is Monday, April 26th. I hope you had a great weekend. I know that um, we did here at our house. Alan and I got the chance to do some house projects we had been wanting to do, and um, so that was a lot of fun. Hope you had a good weekend also. Enjoyed the, the nice weather we had. Today we're going to be in Leviticus chapter 23 and 1 Peter chapter 2. If you want to go ahead and grab your favorite Bible and turn to those um, passages, that's where we'll be reading from today. And as always, I definitely encourage you to go to www.commonprayer.net to follow along so you can participate in the responses with me. Um, worship isn't just meant to be watched, and so... I encourage you to follow along, participate, use your voice along with mine. You can also download the um, app Common Prayer in the Google Play or the App Store. And the icon for it, if you've not looked for it before, is this cross right here. That's kind of what it looks like. So you know that you have the right one. And it's the app that the companion app for this book. Common Prayer, A Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. And this is the book that we've been using throughout this whole time of doing morning prayer together. So, without further ado, hey, good, Vicki, good morning. Sorry for the late time. Um, Alan had a meeting this morning, and so Jonah and I played Mario Kart while he met, and now they're downstairs playing while I get to meet with all of you. On April 27th, 1977, this is kind of sad, by the way, mothers of abducted children in Buenos Aires, Argentina, held their first rally for the disappeared. The mothers organized after losing numerous children during Argentina's dirty war between 1976 and 1983. Many of the children were tortured and killed during this time. The military claims that 9,000 such children are unaccounted for, while the mothers say it's closer to 30,000. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We're going to sing the song. This little light of mine, we're just going to sing um, the first verse together. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. God, grant me courage that I may plant seeds of peace. From Psalm 120. When I was in trouble, I called to the Lord. I called to the Lord and he answered me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from the deceitful tongue. What shall be done to you, and what more besides, O you deceitful tongue? Too long have I to live among the enemies of peace. I am on the side of peace, but when I speak of it, they are for war. God, grant me courage that I may plant seeds of peace. You would go ahead and grab um, a Bible. We're going to be turning to Leviticus chapter 23. And I'm going to do something right quick. So I can see what I'm doing better. There we go. Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 22. 
of Leviticus chapter 23. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, these are the appointed festivals of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed festivals. Six days work shall be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord throughout your settlements. These are the appointed festivals of the Lord, the holy convocations, which you shall celebrate at the time appointed for them. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at twilight, there shall be a Passover during Passover offering to the Lord. And on the 15th day of the same month, oops, sorry. A man whose mother was an Israelite and whose father was an Egyptian came out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite woman's son and a certain Israelite began fighting in the camp. Good morning, Ellen. The Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and a curse, and they brought him to Moses. Now his mother's name was Shalmith, a daughter of Dibri, the tribe of Dan. And they put him in custody until the decision of the Lord should be made clear to them. The Lord said to Moses, saying, Take the blasphemer outside the camp and let all who were within hearing lay their hands on his head and let the whole congregation stone him. And speak to the people of Israel, saying, Anyone who curses God shall bear the sin. One who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be put to death. The whole congregation shall stone the blasphemer. Aliens as well as citizens, when they blaspheme the name, shall be put to death. Anyone who kills a human being shall be put to death. Anyone who kills an animal shall make restitution for it, life for life. Anyone who maims another shall suffer the same injury in return, fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The injury inflicted is the injury to be suffered. One who kills an animal shall make restitution for it, but one who kills a human being shall be put to death. You have one law for the alien and for the citizen, for I am the Lord your God. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The people of Israel did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And then from 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Then to you who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This ends the readings for today. God grant me courage that I may plant seeds of peace. Contemporary Christian activist Jim Wallace has said, people who believe in war leave all behind prepared to die. What price then are we prepared to pay as a people who believe in peace? Those who keep faith to the end will know their weakness the best. God, grant me the courage. Help me that I might plant seeds of peace. Um, 
As we turn to our prayer time this morning, um, I do encourage you today and throughout the week to pray for ways that you can sow seeds of peace and be an agent of peace in um, in our community instead of um, being an antagonist or someone who creates conflict and sows discord. Um, make a special effort this week to sow peace. I've noticed um, as states have started, you know, talking about reopening or, you know, with political leaders making decisions about what um, America is going to do, that there's been a lot of hate and discord and just vitriol um, dripping all over the place in social media. So I encourage you to rise above it. I'm going to try and rise above it and to sow seeds of peace wherever you can. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this time together. Thank you for waking up, waking us up this morning. Thank you for the sunrise. Thank you for the consistency of the sunrise that it happens every day without fail, even when we can't see it. God, we pray that you would um, be with people in our communities who need you the very, very most. Those who are homeless and hungry, sick, struggling. We pray for um, those in essential positions, our healthcare workers, first responders, food workers, selected retail people, God. We pray that you would keep them safe and healthy. For everyone stuck at home, we pray that you would bring patience and peace and comfort and contentment so that we can stay in place where we are at without endangering others. God, for all of us, we pray that you would show us the ways that we can put others before ourselves and be agents for your peace. We pray for our leaders and those who are making decisions for our political leaders, our governors, our you know hospital directors, all those people in positions of power. God, we pray that you would guide those decisions and not greed. For our local leaders, people who we look to in our own lives, our pastors and doctors, parents, mentors. Pray that you would um, rise up leaders from within our midst to guide us through this time, to help us direct our lives and to keep our eyes on you. How we pray for ourselves. We pray that you would help us to seek out those um, dark places where sin has been allowed to grow Help us to um, shine a light there. We confess our sins before you now. Having confessed our sins, God, we come to you with the spirit of repentance. Know that you do forgive your children. We need only to ask and to seek you with a repentant heart. We thank you for this assurance of pardon and forgiveness. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We profess to be people of peace, God, but keep us from the temptation to proclaim peace where there is no peace. Show us today where peace is most needed in our community and in our world. Show us which of us must plant the seeds of peace, which of us much must water them, and which of us must yet become gardeners of your peace. Amen. We will end today the way we end every morning with this benediction that I hope you've memorized by now if you've been um, following along with morning prayer um, consistently. I encourage you to say it along with me 
that the more you say it and the more you proclaim it, the more it becomes part of your heart and a prayer that you live. May the Lord, peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever me, he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you in the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And until we can see you again inside the doors of Muir's Chapel, I'll keep being here Monday through Friday mornings, 8.30 or 9.30 or whenever it happens for morning prayer. Hope everybody has a chance to get outside today and tomorrow while the weather's beautiful. I know Jonah and I are going to do one of um, the High Point Public Library's urban hikes today. So that's a lot of fun. He gets to look at signs and colors and animals. And we've learned about crosswalks and all kinds of things. So those are a lot of fun. If you have um, kids at home and you're looking for something to do, look up either with the city of Greensboro or the city of High Point, any urban hike route that they have. It's just something fun that you can do outside. I will see you tomorrow in the morning.